Okay, by popular vote, this week's devotional is being delivered from within a hole in the ground. Well, one of the things that I like to do whenever I'm stuck inside a hole in the ground is spend some time thinking. So, here's what I've been thinking about. Why was it necessary for Christ, our Redeemer, to die? Why did Jesus have to die anyway? We know he did it to pay for our sin and to make us right with God, but why couldn't he find some different way to do it? Some way that doesn't involve dying. It seems kind of extreme, doesn't it? Well, to understand this, we need to go way back to the beginning of the Bible. Genesis chapter 2. God has created everything, and he rested on the seventh day. And the next thing he did is he created man from the very dust of the earth and the breath of his own nostrils, God created man. And after that, trees began to spring up all over the earth. Beautiful trees. But there were two trees right there in the garden that were most special. The tree of life and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now right after that, God gave his first command to Adam. Here's what he said. You may surely eat of every tree in the garden, but the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat of it. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. It couldn't be any clearer. Adam, you see that tree over there? Don't eat the fruit from that tree. If you do, you'll die. So what did Adam do? He ate from the tree. Now, he wasn't alone. He did it along with his new wife, Eve. And let's be honest, you and I probably would have done the same thing. The consequences are clear. Adam and Eve would now have to die. And this is where it gets tough. So think back to the last time you disobeyed a command from your parents. Like maybe your mom or dad tells you to clean up your room. And if you don't clean up your room, you won't be able to play video games. But you don't clean up your room. Maybe because you didn't feel like it, or maybe because you forgot, or maybe you just went into your room and like picked up a few things and moved them around just so that you could say you cleaned your room. Now, a perfect parent would not allow you to play video games until your room was spotless. And a perfect parent would behave that same way day after day after day forever. A perfect parent would never let you get away with even a single sock on the floor. Every day for a thousand days, if the room isn't spotless, you don't play video games. That's all there is to it. But your parents aren't perfect. I know that because I'm one of them. We get tired. We get busy. We lose our patience. Sometimes, honestly, we're just not even looking. And sometimes you get to play video games even though your room isn't clean. And it's not because the commandment changed, and it's not because we parents are all of a sudden okay with you having a messy room. It's because your parents are not perfect. And sometimes we slip and we let you get away with stuff. Now, think about God. When God gives us a command, like the one he gave to Adam, he's like a parent, like a father. He got to decide whether Adam followed the rules or broke the rules. If God was a judge, who was less than perfect, then he would have uh, probably said something like this to Adam. He would have been like, hey, listen, Adam, you really made me frustrated because you messed up. You did something that was wrong. You broke the rules when I told you not to. But look, Adam, I'm going to let it slide this time. Just make sure it doesn't happen again. Now, if he did that, he would be a bad father, but he is not. In fact, he is the perfect father. Exodus chapter three or chapter 34 verse 7 tells us that God will by no means clear the guilty. Now that means he will never let, let anyone get away with disobedience like your parents might do. So since Adam disobeyed God's commandment, in the garden he got the promised consequence. And as painful as it was, he ate from the tree, so he had to die, just like God said. Simple as that, because 
God is a perfect father. Now, you might have noticed that Adam didn't die right then and there. That's because his body died many, many years later, but the death that happened right at that moment was, was an internal death, a spiritual death. Adam sinned against God, and he was separated from God. It's like being dead on the inside. But here's the worst part. It's like the death that happened on the inside of Adam because of sin. It's like an infectious disease, a virus that gets transmitted to every single human after him. 100% of humans have this disease from the moment of their birth. Romans chapter 5, verse 12 tells us that sin came into the world through one man, Adam, and death through sin, so that death spread to all men because all sinned. Now, because we have sin in our blood just like Adam did, we get the same consequence that Adam got. Someday our bodies are going to wear out and they're going to die like Adam's did. But most importantly, from the moment we're born, we're dead on the inside and separated from God with no way to ever come alive again on our own. We will continue to be infected and dead on the inside unless there is someone, a substitute, who could come and find me and take the virus out of me and put it into himself instead. <laughs> who would possibly do that? Remember that sin is the virus that's there because of disobedience to God, and the consequence of sin is death. So that substitute, whoever it is, is going to have to die on the inside, separating from God, and he's also going to have to physically die. One way or another, someone has to die for the sin that I'm responsible for. That's because death is the consequence for sin. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, it says that Jesus himself bore our sins in his body on the tree. It's talking about the cross that we might die, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. So here's the point. Jesus Christ is the substitute sacrifice that we need. He didn't have the virus of sin. He never disobeyed God. So he didn't have to die for himself. But he loves you so much that he will take your infection instead of you. It's very simple. God said, if you sin, you will die. We have sin, and so we have to die. But if we give our sin to Jesus, then Jesus has to die for us, for you and for me. In fact, he already did. You just have to believe it. And then you can come alive.